As far as I understand, any fossil that you find at your museum is a fully formed creature. There is not something in there that is halfway between one animal and halfway between another animal that you can observe to be so. Your assumption is that evolution is true from the outset. That's your presupposition, and therefore you say that you and I are transitional forms. We're constantly changing into the next thing. That's based on your presupposition that evolution is true. But the observable evidence is that you've got animals that are fully formed. You've got adaptation within a species, but you've never seen any animal produce anything other than uh, that's that not type how of animal. Works. You say, on, well, I have faith that over second. time it'll turn into something else, but you've never seen it happen. No one's ever seen it happen. And that is called macroevolution. You cannot extrapolate microevolution over time and equal macroevolution. No one's ever seen it demonstrated. Okay. Let me, let me move on. The reason why Kirk isn't seeing the kind of missing link that he wants to see is because mutations must necessarily be small enough to allow for the survival and reproduction of that creature. You're not going to find a half duck, half crocodile, because what would that mate with? That wouldn't be to anything's evolutionary advantage. But even if there were no fossils, no transitional forms, evolution is still soundly supported by biology, by genetic information, by cosmological information, all of the fields of science unanimously agree and support it. So even if there was not a single fossil on this planet, it wouldn't matter. And we are all only this year's model of humanity, and we are constantly changing. Okay. I already did respond to that just prior to what she said. Um, I, I, there was something else that I'd love to bring up uh, before we... Yeah, I, I'd like to bring something else up. <clears throat> Imagine you're walking down the beach, and you see in the sand some ripples in the sand. And you conclude, you know, that, that's really interesting. I bet that the, the, the water and the wind made those ripples in the sand. But if you keep walking and you find in the sand etched, John loves Mary forever with a heart around it and an arrow through it, you would conclude, somebody must have written that. Why? Because it contains information. Nature can produce patterns. That happens all the time. But it cannot produce detailed, meaningful information. Now, you and I have something inside of our bodies called DNA. You have 10 trillion cells, and in those cells is DNA. DNA are microscopic strands containing digital information. If you connected all of your DNA strands together, they'd reach from the Earth to the sun and back 66 times in your body and in mine. And that whole thing is packed with genetic, encoded digital information that is the instructions on how to make a nose, eyes, ears, teeth, skin, hair, bones, lungs, a heart, a stomach. How did the information get in there? By accident? Charles Darwin spoke of the simple cell, but that was so long ago, he didn't have the level of knowledge that we have now and couldn't see down to the DNA level where you have the enormous complexity and the very specific information. Remember, nature produces patterns, but not information. And if you do the research, you will find that any self-respecting molecular biologist would tell you no one has a clue how the human body could possibly build itself by an accidental process. You say, well, then why do so many people believe it? I'm hoping to answer that question for you tonight, um, at least from my perspective as a former atheist myself, if we have time. 